Fibroblasts migrating across a two-dimensional surface in vitro are highly polarised. Signalling molecules like the phospholipid PIP3 and the small GTPases RAC and CDC42 concentrate at the cell's leading edge, where they promote the extension of actin-rich lamellopodial protrusions. The activity and organisation of these molecules in cells moving through three-dimensional environments is less well understood, however an issue that Ryan Petrie from the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland, wanted to address. What I wanted to do was to use fluorescent protein-based biosensors where you could actually see where proteins are active in a living cell while it's migrating. And what I wanted to do was to build upon studies that people had done with these tools in 2D where they'd seen clear polarization. I wanted to put these tools in cells migrating in 3D in hopes that there would be differences in their localization, and that could sort of lead us to understand what mechanistically could be different, actually, in cells migrating in a three-dimensional environment versus what we've already known from studies in 2D. Petrie, a postdoc in Ken Yamada's laboratory, began by observing fibroblasts migrating through explants of mouse dermal tissue. We did see some lamellopodia-based migration, but what's really caught our eye was what looked like very strange cells. They're really sort of blunt. They don't have this obvious classical-looking lamellopodia, which would be a very thin, wide protrusion at the front. And also they had what turned out to be a quite a distinguishing feature, which is these lateral blebs. We did not see any clear polarization of RAC1 towards the front. And to us, that was a strong indication that, in fact, lamellopodia were absent in these cells and that we were seeing a sort of a novel mode of fibroblast migration. Petri et al. named these blunt cylindrical protrusions lobopodia, after similarly shaped protrusions in amoeba that are driven by intracellular pressure rather than by actin polymerization. To study fibroblast lobopodia in more detail, Petri et al. used two different in vitro models of a three-dimensional extracellular matrix. The first of these was a fibroblast-derived mixture of several matrix proteins assembled into parallel fibres, whereas the second was a non-aligned meshwork of purified collagen. To compare the mechanical properties of these environments, Petri and Yamada teamed up with Nuria Guevara and Richard Chadwick, who used atomic force microscopy to measure the matrices' stiffness and elastic behaviour. We were able to confirm that the cell-derived matrix and the dermal explants were in fact significantly stiffer than collagen, but what turned out to be very important in terms of determining if the cell used lobopodia or lamellopodia-based migration was this elastic behavior characteristic. And we found that dermal explants and cell-derived matrix were both linear elastic materials. And that is, their stiffness did not vary with the amount of force you pulled on it. While collagen, you could imagine it to be more like an elastic band where it gets stiffer the more you pull on it. Consistent with the similar mechanical properties of cell-derived matrix and dermal explants, fibroblasts also formed lobopodia and lateral blebs when migrating within cell-derived matrix, whereas in collagen, the cells formed multiple long protrusions with small lamellopodia at their tips. So we saw clear differences in how the cells migrated in these different 3D matrix environments. But what was really cool for the cell-derived matrix is that there was in fact an internal control of dimensionality Cells that were on the two-dimensional surface of the cell drive matrix still used this lamellopodia-based migration. It was only cells that were inside the three-dimensional cell drive matrix that used lobopodia. It means it's actually the dimensionality is what is important for lobopodia-based migration in the cell drive matrix. Actin and actin-binding proteins like cortactin were concentrated in the lamellopodia of cells migrating in 3D collagen or on the 2D surface of cell derived matrix but these proteins weren't enriched in the lobopodia of fibroblasts migrating inside cell-derived matrix, confirming that these two types of protrusions are distinct from one another. Lobopodial-based migration was also distinct from the bleb-based motility of certain cancer cells, because lobopodia contained integrin-based adhesions to the extracellular matrix, and lobopodial migration was disrupted by integrin inhibitors. Petri et al. then looked at the distribution of the signaling molecules PIP3, RAC1 and CDC42, which were all polarised towards the leading edge of fibroblasts undergoing lamellopodial-based motility. 
But when we looked at cells migrating inside the 3D cell drain matrix when we were seeing lobopodia-based motility, the differences in their localization of these signaling pathways was astounding. They were consistently non-polarized and they were signaling hotspots distributed pretty much all around the cell. And that is significant because these lobopodia-based cells are still clearly polarized and they're still able to directionally migrate. So that's actually something that we might look into later is what's driving the polarization of these cells in the absence of any polarized RAC1, CC42, or PIP3 signaling. Although RAC1 and CDC42 weren't polarized in lobopodia-bearing cells, knocking down either of these GTPases affected the speed of fibroblast migration through 3D cell-derived matrix, without changing the cell's propensity to form lobopodia. In stark contrast, when we knocked down the small GTPA row A, we found that the cells were no longer able to use lobopodia-based migration in 3D cell drive matrix. They all switched to lamellopodia-based migration, but the velocity did not change. Inhibiting the row effector, rho kinase, or its target motor protein, myosin 2, also switched the mode of fibroblast migration in 3D cell-derived matrix from lobopodia to lamellopodia-based motility. Intracellular ROA signaling therefore promotes the formation of lobopodia, but what about cues from the cell's 3D environment? To investigate this, Petri et al. manipulated the mechanical properties of cell-derived matrix by digesting it with the protease trypsin to reduce its stiffness and convert it into a non-linearly elastic material just trypsinizing it made the cell drive matrix resemble collagen. And when we put the cells in there and looked at how they were migrating, we found that they switched to lamellopodia-based migration. And we were able to rescue both the stiffness and the elastic behavior by cross-linking the trypsinized cell drive matrix, and the cells again moved using lobopodia-based motility. Cross-linking collagen, on the other hand, made it stiffer and linearly elastic, inducing fibroblasts to switch from lamellopodial to lobopodial-based migration. Crucially, however, cells still form lamellopodia in dense collagen gels that were as stiff as cell-derived matrix, but which were still non-linearly elastic. And we feel that that non-linear elastic behavior turns out to be the key factor that prevents lobopodia from forming. The switch to lobopodial-based migration is therefore governed intrinsically by rho A signaling and extrinsically by the elastic behaviour of the 3D extracellular matrix. We could break it down into a series of three questions that the cell sort of asks uh, as it's migrating to determine whether it's going to use a lamellopodium or lobopodium. The first question is, what is the dimensionality of the matrix? If it's two-dimensional, the cell uses the lamellopodium. But if it's three-dimensional, the next question would be, what is the level of intracellular ROA activity? If it's low, the cell uses lamellopodium. But if ROA activity is high, we feel there's a third question, and that is, is the 3D matrix linearly elastic? If that answer is no, then the cell uses lamellopodium. If it says yes, it's a lobopodium. But why have two different modes of fibroblast migration? After all, when Petri et al. inhibited ROA signaling, cells switched to lamellopodial-based motility without any effect on the speed of their migration through 3D cell-derived matrix. Well, that's what we see if the cells are being treated with 10% serum and there's a whole host of soluble signaling factors in serum, which could be masking any potential inefficiencies. So we wanted to do the same sort of experiment, but challenge the cells. What if we put them in non-ideal conditions? Petri et al. found that fibroblasts still formed lobopodia and moved rapidly through 3D cell-derived matrix when 10% serum was replaced with a mix of PDGF and glucose. Removing the glucose, however, lowered the cell's ROA activity, switch their protrusions to lamellopodia, and decrease the speed of their migration. Importantly, in the 3D collagen, under the same conditions, there was no change in the velocity of migration. So we concluded that under some circumstances, lobopodia could be associated with efficient migration in the rigid linear elastic cell drive matrix. As well as determining when and why migrating fibroblasts prefer lobopodial over lamellopodial-based migration, Petri et al. want to investigate how non-polarized RAC and CDC42 signaling contributes to lobopodial motility. But in the meantime, you can learn more about the different modes of fibroblast migration through 3D environments in the paper by Petri et al., published in the April 30, 2012 issue of the Journal of Cell Biology.